Celebrating its eighth successive year, and for the last time in 82, we welcome viewers across Australia to The Dun Lane Show. show for 1982. It is going to be a terrific program and it's great to have your company. And for the final time in this year, with Graham Lyle on the orchestra, and now here's Don. you was coming out here, but uh, you, you, my name's Hill, Harold Hill. You know, sometimes it's uh, Professor Harold Hill. Well, not really professor like in um, uh, scientific, it's uh, professor like in uh, music. <laughs> you, oh, look, I can tell you. Yeah, I'm not really a professor, you see. I'm a band salesman. A band salesman, you know what I mean? Shiny brass instruments, drums, snappy uniforms. Order them all right straight out of the catalog. Now take those folks back there, as a, for instance. Those are all potential suckers, uh, customers, right there. Now, all I've got to do is convince those citizens of River City that a boys band in their town will be the greatest event since Adam discovered what could be done with a rib. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. All you have to do is paint some pictures for them. Up here, a little imagination, a little razzmatazz, a rat-a-tat here, a rumpty dump there. And before you can say Great Caesar's Ghost, they want a boys band, and I've made a sale. You know, they tell me there's some big doings going on here tonight. Some sort of celebration. Uh, final show of the year or something. Lots of celebrities, they say. Uh, Paul Hogan, Bert Patty Newton, Colette Mann, Tim Evans, Kevin Arnett. <laughs> and get a load of this one. You're going to meet Simon and Garfunkel live all the way from New York City by something they call the satellite. <laughs> Ain't that a doozy? The satellite. <laughs> all a bit much for a fella like me. I just got used to it being 1900. Look, I'll tell you what I better do. I better get to them while I still got the chance, because uh, I think they're ripe for picking. Ready for a uh, fleecing, so to speak. Let's see if we can do some business. Oh. deal with the trouble, friends, with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me, if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize a River City Boys band. Think, my friends, how could any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Remember, friends, 
is what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fabled walls of Jericho. Beard parlor walls come a-tumbling down. Oh, a band will do it, my friends. We just said a boys' band, do you hear me? Now River City's got to have a boys' band, and I mean she needs it today. Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand. River City's going to have a boys' band. As sure as the Lord made little green apples, and that band's going to be in uniform. Johnny, Willie, Teddy, Fred, here you go. And you'll see the glitter of crashing cymbals. And the thunder of rolling drums. And the shimmer of trumpets. Ta ta da! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill that I once enjoyed when all those famous band leaders, Gilmore, Liberati, Pat Conway, the great creator, W.C. Handy and John Philip Sousa all came to town on the very same historic Virtuosos, the cream of every famous band. Seventy-six trombones called the morning sun, with a hundred and ten cornets right behind. There were more than a thousand reeds springing up like weeds. There were horns of every shape and kind. There were copper bottom timpani and hospital. Thundering, thundering all along the way. Double bell, euphonium, and bassoon. Soon, having his big pants, hey, there were 50 mounted cannon in the battery. Thundering, thundering, louder than before. Clarinets of every size, trumpeters who improvise a bow, magnifier than the score.
You know what it's like trying to tie a bow tie when you're out there and they say to you, 15 seconds? You know? <laughs> sort of doing that. Oh. Right. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, it certainly is a thrill coming to the end of a year. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's been a really good year for us. And uh, we fought through a lot of trouble and a lot of other things. So uh, we appreciate your reaction. We appreciate you watching. I appreciate you people in here. And everybody in the cast does too. It's been a lovely year, and we're going to have another big one next year, too. So don't you worry, no matter what you read. It's going to be all right. Now, finish cleaning up. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel are two of the biggest names in the music industry. Uh, throughout the 60s, they were to record songs that became anthems for a generation. Songs like Sounds of Silence, I Am a Rock, Scarborough Fair, The Boxer, and of course, who could ever forget Mrs. Robinson. Uh, ironically, it was after their biggest hit, which was Bridge Over Troubled Waters, that the two split uh, to concentrate on uh, their own musical careers and uh, acting in films. Early morning in New York, I mean very early morning in New York, and Simon and Garfunkel are waiting for us, so we thank them for joining us. Would you say hello, please, to Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel. Here they are. Right. guys are sitting there looking very serious, listening to all that applause and things. Hello, how are you? Uh, we're fine. We feel a little detached here on the other side of the world with this hookup, but yeah. uh, we're with you in spirit. Well, yes, we, we, we can, you can see us, but we can't see you. That's why we're uh, looking the way we look, which yeah. is sort of n naturally uh, dour and uh, depressed. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it's always a bit uh, uneasy for people when they first have to do this thing because you get to look at a camera, of course, we see you. Uh, live, happy, smiling. Uh, listen, uh, what time is it there now in New York, by the way? Uh, about 5.30 in the morning. Oh. Do, you, do you guys usually get up at this hour of the morning, 5.30? Of course. Yeah. We, didn't, uh, I, we didn't go to sleep. We just, we just stayed up. Ah, well, that's nice. Just for us, you mean? Yeah. Well, no, we had a, you know, we were just uh, Hanging doing around. our usual New York activities, you know? Yeah. Is New York still a late-night uh, entertainment center, I mean, where people can still go and see entertainment two, three, four, five o'clock oh, in the morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Parties at the Statue of Liberty, dancing at the UN, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Listen, tell me about the reunion concert. Uh, Eleven years you were split up, uh, went your separate ways. A lot has been written about it. But um, uh, what was it that uh, brought you back together again? Uh, you answer, Paul. Uh, <laughs> there was a, a concert in Central Park that's uh, been something of a yearly tradition, uh, and I, uh, I was asked to, to uh, do it, and uh, I asked Art to join me on it, and uh, that's, really, that's really how it came about. I'm going to be, a, no, when you're working to a large audience like that, I mean, one of the, uh, that uh, enormity, uh, it, can they hear you? I mean, can you hear them? Does it sound as big as it does, or do you just hear the people in the front, maybe? You can hear them. You can uh, hear the sense of mass of people in the audience. Uh, they can hear you, but they can't hear you in the way that you hear yourself. So that's the tricky part. Mm. You, they're hearing you amplified through your sound system, but you're not hearing yourself through that same so sound system. That has to be some feeling of security. 400,000 acceptances at once. <laughs> it does a lot for you. It's fabulous. Yeah, it does a lot for your ego, I'll tell you. What about the meeting of you two? Is it true you went to school together? Yes, we grew up together. We've known each other since we're uh, nine years old, 10 years old. People here in the studio audience are just getting a look at a still shot of the two of you. One of you has very short curly hair and the other one just has short hair. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Crew cuts, it looks uh -huh, like. That was me with the short, curly hair. Yeah, right. the, those days, I had short, curly hair, and Art had uh, just regular short hair. But later on, as we grew up, we changed hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that for us now? We'd like to look at it if we could. Yeah, uh, we actually could, but we just assumed that. <laughs> in, in all the songs that you've... <laughs> 
In, in all the songs you've done and composed, I have one question I would really like to ask. It's been something that's been bothering me for years. Mrs. Robinson, the song, did you write that after the character in the movie, or did you guys really know a Mrs. Robinson? Uh, no, I wrote it for the movie. Okay. It was I, Mrs. Roosevelt for a while. Was oh, it? actually, it was. Uh, this, when I originally started to write the song, it was called uh, uh, Here's to You, Mrs. Roosevelt. But uh, when I was working on uh, writing the music for The Graduate, I changed it to uh, Mrs. Robinson. Uh, in the, as individuals, in the individual careers that you pursued, um, was it difficult for you uh, after the split? Uh... It was for me. It took me about uh, two and a half or three years before I got back in the studio to make an album, and those years were... Uh, reassessment years and there was a certain uh, difficulty in establishing uh, a place in show business for myself alone but Paul I remember that as trip as tough Paul what about you of course you you pursued acting things and uh... Uh, well we both uh, we both uh, did uh, work in film but uh, my my recollection of it was uh, I don't remember it as difficult as much as it, that it was exciting to do uh, to sure. do work by to do it, it, your individual work uh, I, I went into it uh, knowing that it probably wouldn't be as uh, as popular or as uh, you know as as hugely successful as Simon and Garfunkel was of but uh, what did you expect <laughs> that's what I expected, and uh, and it wasn't. But it was uh, it was exciting and uh, artistically fulfilling for me. I liked it. All right. Well, the big news, of course, is, and I think we'll be announcing this for the first time to most people in Australia who are listening. That Simon and Garfunkel are coming here. You will be on a concert tour. I think it starts on the fifth of February. Um, is this? Um, what do you know about Australia, by the way? <laughs> well, you you go to Hawaii and, and you turn left. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going a long time. <laughs> You'll have a lovely time down here. You've got a, a, a virtual army of fans, uh, I have to tell you that. And Kevin Jacobson, of course, is, uh, is, um, uh, is looking forward to it with uh, great expectation. I think so is everyone else. Uh, when you do the concert, all of your hits will be performed. Uh, can we tell people that? Pretty much. Well, we do. Uh, well, did you see... Uh, uh, are you familiar with the concert in Central Park? Was that shown in Australia? Um, I don't believe it. Was it? Yes, the boys are shaking their heads here. Yes, it was, yeah. It was? Yeah. Well, uh, we do about uh, two-thirds to three-quarters of that show, and then we, we've, we've added some, uh, some songs that weren't in that show, and uh, we'll be doing some new songs uh, on, on this trip. Well, for pretty much all the hits are in the show. Yeah, we say, we essentially do uh, most of the uh, Simon and Garfunkel big hits and uh, and a couple of uh, Frankie Lane tunes. <laughs> he reached out to the side there, and everybody was waiting to see who was going. I thought he was going to come back with some albums or something. I didn't know. He came back with a cup of tea. It's lovely. Listen, fellas, thank you very much for talking to us. I'm about to tell people where they can get tickets for the concerts. You'll be back, you'll be doing your concerts around the 5th of February. I think that's around the time that we come back after our break, back onto the air. So I hope we get the opportunity to see you in person, maybe even in here as well, and chat to you, okay? Good luck. Thanks. And I hope you have a fantastic time over here. I'm sure you will, as uh, all the fans out there will prove. Thanks. Thanks. Have a happy, happy New Year. Have a happy Hanukkah. It'll be all right, too. <laughs> okay. Time to go. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, getting up at 5.30 in the morning to join us from New York. That's uh, quite a kick for us. Uh, as you heard, Kevin Jacobson Concerts uh, will be bringing Simon and Garfunkel to Australia next year. Now, let, just let me tell you about this. The only way to get tickets for their concerts is through mail bookings. And the mail bookings open tomorrow, would you believe? And to obtain tickets, you send a check for $18 per ticket. Made pay... Gasp. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Made payable to Simon and Garfunkel Tour, and you send them to these addresses. 
They'll be in Sydney on Saturday, February the 5th at the Sydney Sports Ground. There you sent it to Post Office Box 196, Glebe, New South Wales, 2037. Uh, Adelaide, they'll be there Wednesday to February the 9th at the Adelaide Oval. These are all big venues, so I suggest that you get in early. I'm telling you, they're going to be packed out. This is going to be a Neil Diamond all over again. Post Office Box 32, North Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, Melbourne, they'll be down here Saturday, February the 12th at VFL Park, Waverley. They'll be playing against Collingwood. And the way you get... <laughs> <laughs> and the way you get those tickets is uh, you, send a, uh, you send a letter to Center Point, Box Office, Berg Street, Melbourne, Victoria. And Brisbane, they'll be up there Tuesday, February the uh, 15th at Lang Park. That address, GPO Box 607, Brisbane, Queensland, 4001. We've got a lot more show in store for you. Kevin Jacobson's bringing out Simon and Garfunkel. Now you know where to see them, how to get the tickets. We thank them for joining us. Now we're going to go on with our last show of the year, and we're going to have a terrific time, okay? Hang in there, we'll be back. All right. I want to know what's going on back there. We're Everybody... having a party. Are you having a good time out here? Well, we're working well, out that's here. Well, Don, what? only six weeks to go. I... No, no, you've got it all wrong. The show finishes tonight, Bert. Yes, but I've got a terrific little Christmas present here, Don, especially for you, Morton, for being such a lovely man. And also, it, it will serve not only as a Christmas present, but a present for you-know-what. I hope that you... <laughs> Don't start in. You had the phones ringing so hard. That was the idea. Newspaper people calling all over the place. Everything. Have a look. What? I hope you haven't got one. Did you wrap it? Yes, I did. When does it end? Wait a minute. It's very, very small, but you'll like it once yeah. you get to it. <laughs> Story of your life, eh? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you, Pickering? Right. <laughs> now, have a look. Now, wait a minute. It, it's not just any old cup. It's a cup and it's not even running over. It's part, it's part of the Archipel range. Oh, feel so how, thrilled. Feel how light it is to hold. It yeah. even has a, a lip to stop the drips. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course. Archipel, a French dinnerware that's dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and as translucent as yes. the finest china. Have a look at that. Look, you can see my... You can see my hand through it. It's translucent. And once more, Archipel resists chipping and cracking. I wish we did. Just have a look at this. I'm going to throw it over there on the carpet, and nothing will happen. Look at that. See? Didn't chip. Isn't didn't that crack. fantastic? Thank All the way over on that thick piece of yes. carpet, and nothing happens. I may do it way. again. It comes don't in a great range. Point. Oh, it's the last show. No, don't, because it's... they got very annoyed. Tell them about the letter you got. Which letter? You got a letter from the sponsor saying to was you... Was that a real letter? Yes. I thought it was a gag from you. Did they actually write that to me? Yes. How dare they? Look, it's a... Oh! Yeah, I'll get another letter. It didn't break. Isn't that wonderful? It comes in a great range of design. <laughs> it's all attractively gift it box, too. Is. There is a god, Don. There is a god. And it's available from all good stores throughout Australia, and also to those stores that have been conned into stocking them. <laughs> so, for, so for great kiss, Christmas gift giving, how could you miss with famous Archipel, Australia's best value dinnerware? Don, I was only joking with that little present. Is this an eye cup? Here no. is my oh, real cup. present to is you for Christmas, oh. and I wish you and yours and everybody close to you <laughs> the compliments of the season. And I hope that 1983 is as wonderful we'll a year as 1982 has <laughs> I have watched you throughout the year, <laughs> and I know that if 1983 can be... Christine, how long before you have the baby, uh, Neva? Eight weeks. Eight weeks? You just, could you just stand up one sec? Can we pan down just a little? Come on, go on. Can I stand sideways? Can you stand sideways? I just want to say. Can you believe that? And she can still sing. What else is there to do? <laughs> That's love. Christine O'Donnell. Eight weeks. Just about the time we get back. January 14th. I'll think about you on that day. <laughs> Ooh, they, get, they get so uptight when they're pregnant, don't they? <laughs> Christine O'Donnell and Julie McKenna, uh, two of the best singers in the business, really great singers. They perform regularly on the show with us. Tonight, we've got a little duet from the both of them. This is their version of the Garland and Streisand duet, Happy Days Are Here Again and Get Happy, okay? Here's Julie and Christy. Say hello, will you? Know? Hi, 
Christine. Hi, Jerry. What would you say to um, join me in a couple of happy songs? I think we could find two. Just two. <laughs> Forget your trouble. Happy day. Come on, get happy. Oh, here we go. You've Let's got a chance. So your kids are clear again. Shout. Better than that. I don't know how you can put them together better than that. Thank you. It's lovely. Oh, great. Put your hands together. Call that man is here. Here you go. Come on, tell us. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Really nice to see you. Thank you very what, much. Uh, uh, this is what? Um, yeah, well, this... I'm not allowed to know what you were going to do today. Uh, well, I've been Christmas shopping. Hmm. A little What'd you earlier. do? Wrap yourself for Christmas? Uh... No, I, c I couldn't find a Christmas tree because it's a little bit early, and so I came dressed as one. 
Oh, that's fair enough. Is yeah. this is this your instead of an angel, you put a little red bird yeah, on well, your head? Yeah, the angels aren't out yet. Only the birds. Right. So, um, now... so this so this hair is for the birds up here. <laughs> a little joke. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I think um, these presents. Would you like to sit down, perhaps? You could sit in that chair. That'd be a change, wouldn't okay, it? Okay, sure. Now, because I have to be here, because I'm master of ceremonies with the presents, you know. Right. Now. How did um, you get the job? What did you do? You bought these? Yes. For who? Peter Feynman. Peter Feynman. You know Peter Feynman. Uh -huh. Peter Feynman. <laughs> well, you know. Well, he, you know. That one. Yeah, well, right. he, he... Has he done that to yeah, you? Yeah, he's done I that to me. Anyway, but I've done that. What are you that. doing? <laughs> anyway, so he said, he gave me this open check, and he said, you can go shopping, and you can buy presents for everybody who's on the show. He gave you an open check? He signed by did. who? Oh, anybody. Anyway, oh. so um, he said I could buy presents, and I have. Now, because yours is a bit involved... My present? Your present isn't a bit involved. I've got to... I'll give you yours first. Yes. Now... Uh, can I help this, you? Yes, this one. It's wrapped up, so you can unwrap it while I'm talking about the other one. You mean we can open Chrissy presents yes. before Christmas? Oh yes, definitely. Now this, this is this is your the first part of your present, so you just open that. Okay. Now, when you open it, you'll understand, you know, because <laughs> it's got. I've been with you for a year and I still don't understand. No, but don't but worry. It'll be very good. Now, while you're opening that, I'll just show you. <laughs> it's dark blue underpants. <laughs> There's 500 pair of dark blue underpants. Yeah, well, you said... Are you said... trying to tell me something? No, you said, oh. you said to me on the show last week, you said that you were superstitious about wearing navy blue dark undershorts, was what you said. <laughs> In actual fact, to me, you see. Oh, well, we can't all be bloody Australian all the time, can we? No, what? you said that. So I thought, seeing there's 80 shows for next year, there's 80, there's pairs, 80 of pairs of na oh, navy blue undershorts. What kind are they? I mean, are they oh, scanty they're... ones? or no, are they? Because well... I only wear those really skinny ones on the side, oh, you dear, know. Oh, dear, well, I didn't know what size you were, you know. So, um, I had to... Why didn't you come around? You could have measured. Oh, no. No, I was busy that day. What cup are they? Um, now, uh, now, yes? What size cup are they? Oh, I don't oh. know. Don't ask me that. Listen, I've got so many presents and they'll be pushing. Is that your size? Uh, These are my could put me and Graham Lyle in anyway, these. Anyway, this is another part of your present. Okay, now listen, thanks. I've got to do more presents here. All right, I've well, got uh... this one, this one, I've got a movie book for Pete Smith, because it's movie quotes so that he can read real what pe real movie right. people have said. Well, these are and French ones. French ones. French on the yeah. shorts. Le they say, shorts. Pourquoi? Yes, they do. Oh, now, wonderful. listen, I bought this for Pete Smith, too. This is a book called. Oh, these are nice. Listen. Did you get more? Why? <laughs> I, now, listen, yes. I bought this book, which is called Playing With Yourself. <laughs> for Pete Smith. Because, see, it's video games, you know? Oh, a video game does, handbook and it's playing with you. I got it, And he does the yes. in-television ads, see? Right, yes. That's a little in-joke, you know? Right. Um, and I Can also, I put my present over here for certainly. a Certainly. Yes. And I also bought this for uh, Pete Smith, which is a straw decker, which for no reason other than it said it was shower-proof, it says it in there. Shower-proof. Shower proof, yes. You see, and that means he can wear it in the shower. Okay. Oh. Now, um, ba boom Oh, that one's for me. Oh, so is that. So is that one. Um, now, oh, here's another one for you. For me? Yes. Yeah, Why did you buy? I didn't buy anything oh, for you. Oh, because I love you so much. Oh. Now, there you go. That's, now, that'll be in the newspapers. Um, now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> these ones are really nice. These ones. You'll like these ones a lot. Look at these ones. <laughs> Somewhere in Melbourne, there's going to be a bunch of ladies going to buy underwear for their husbands at Christmas. There will be no underwear left. Now, These are like... wonderful. Uh... Yeah. Well, there's 80 pairs of those, too. Yeah, they're very now, cool. um, this, this, oh, that's mine. Uh, there's another present for you there. Yeah. Now, this is here. What? Oh, now, this I bought for Paul Hogan, because I think he's nice. And a bit of a spunk. Oh, I got... oh yes, You think Paul is. Hogan's a bit of a spunk? Yeah. And he once said to me that he thought I was the thinking man's genie little. <laughs> and I thought that was really nice. Now, look, I've bought him this solid gold toothpick. Yeah, sure, yeah, because, toothpick, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. it is a solid... Oh, oh, I can't work it. Anyway, it's a solid gold toothpick, and this is the champagne toothpaste to go with it. Oh, I see. Look what you do. You turn it. Look at that's oh, very cute. You very hold cute. it like that, 
and you turn it, and it comes out of the top. Oh, look at that. And that's, that's very good for you. If, a guy, if you're with a guy and he decides to get smart, you put this on his neck, go, you know? Oh, yeah. Good, huh? I thought it was only for picking solid gold teeth. Oh, that might be it. No, anyway, and this champagne... Listen, listen, listen. This champagne, this champagne toothpaste, four ninety five, quite cheap. Now, that's for Hogan? Yeah, but the other solid gold toothpick, oh, fortune, fortune. Oh, he'll fortune. love that. Now, well, when he comes um, out, I'll give him it. Now, look, uh, I've got this other present somewhere that the boys had to bring on, but... Well, hang on, I'll open this while you look. All right, now... What's in here? Hang on, in here... More bloody underpants. Maybe the boys could bring it on now. Oops! This is... I'm Jarquette. not... Oh, now you might be talking. Let me see if these are the right ones. Now, I'm not sure about this one. This, this is closer. Is that... Am I getting closer? These are closer, yes. Right, okay. Ah! Ah! Can I help you? What do you want? I can't get this... Oh, just a minute. I don't think it's too tied up. No, it's not. It's just this one is... little ribbon is tied over. Oh, you want to open something else while I try yes, and open it? Yes, I'll try. Now, this is another nice present for you here. Yeah. And, um, there, this uh, is open now. Yes, well, isn't this interesting? This is the dog you have when you're not having a dog. <laughs> now, isn't this interesting? Who is that for? I thought I might give it to you. I wasn't... I'm not sure. You know how you always buy a present you know, and never know who to give it to? Well, I bought this. Mainly My dog will was... try to do something to that. Yeah. <laughs> See what it is? It's it's um made in the Philippines, as you can tell by its eyes, and um, it's all um no, that's how they do the eyes in the Philippines. They do because it's got the thing. Anyway, yeah. um, so, and it's carved wood, and I got it from a man called Gary Vincent, who was very nice and gave me a sombrero. It, this is a very nice thing. Who is it for? Me? I, yes. I who did you buy for? You only bought presents for me. What's in that long tube there? That's for you. Now, um... I know, we gotta go. It's okay, you tell me we gotta go, we'll go. Who's telling me to go? Wait a oh, minute. Oh, oh no, you can't, because I've got this really terrific one in here. Hang on, let me see what's in this here. Is, this one's for Kevin Arnett. Wait till Lord you see this. I'm underpants and everything, I know. <laughs> now listen, you ready? Right, everybody to my house for an underpants party. We're gonna have a look. Kevin Arnett? Isn't it terrific? There's what does it mean? Th and look, it's got the price on it. <laughs> oh, $277.50, don't tell him. Um, I thought it was very nice. What does it do? Well, you could keep your soup in it. <laughs> or you could wear it when you're, you're saying the weather. You know, I thought, I thought it'd be... I thought it'd be really nice, you know? If and he'd it, wear that on the weather, Bert and I would chip in a couple of hundred apiece just to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna dare him to do it, you know? Picture John Sorrell. Well, There's a Viking it. doing the weather. You could use it for a number of things, uh -huh. could he? Listen, he could wear it out at night. He could do anything. Uh -huh. This is my last... This is what I bought for me. Right. Because this is the last present? Yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, dear, I hate it when they yell at me. Now, look, this is a... That's dark, wonderful, a tent. Yes. No, this is a oh. Flamingo Park jumper, right? This is from Sydney. A and Flamingo Park jumper? Yes, and it's all knitted and it's gorgeous and it's got a gum tree on it. And the lady said Hang it's on. called... Hang on, you've got to see it from a distance. Oh, yes. I see. Yes, there's and the gum tree. Yes. Oh, right. oh, I just, oh, I just get my present. Oh, um, and it's got a gum tree on it, you see. And the lady said it's called erotic gum. And I said, why? And she said, well, turn it upside down. Now, are you ready for this? We've got to do it quick. We could very easily get one off the right, air. Right, it's black, okay. Turn right? it upside down. Do it I'm ready quick. for anything. You ready for this? Yes. Turn it upside down. <laughs> That's it. You want another look? Yeah. <laughs> if that's a man, he's got problems. <laughs> I, can, I can give him some underwear. It'll be good. Will you thank call that man with some presents? <laughs> All right, listen. Thank you. Let me tell you something. This machine here, you've seen these before. This machine has 30 pieces in it. I mean, you could buy it, it costs about 600 bucks, uh, and you'd expect it to cost that much. It takes uh, a lot of assembly, it takes washing, storage, and for about a fifth of that price, Bomix offer a small, efficient equipment that is proven worldwide. Tell them about it, Teresa. For three years, I've been using the Bomix on television to prepare food, and without it, it would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Because with it, I can use it in saucepans on the stove, uh -huh. I can use it to whip up things in a mixing bowl. It so goes into box. cups, yep. packets, and I can even grind spices in the dry food. 
Shows you how versatile it is. Barmic washes clean and fast. It saves water and it's very quiet. And uh, just have a look how handily it stores. Okay. In it that just stores in the little bracket there. It's got its own hanging. And when I'm paper. slicing up fruits and vegetables or shredding cabbage for uh, coleslaw, I use the V slicer because it prepares 250 different slicing and dicing combinations. And mm -hmm. that also now has a little bracket for it to store in as well. Okay, well now is the time. When was I supposed to use this? That's it there. That's, That's it right. now. That's for Christmas. It's another one of our products. That's oh. the presser wash. Okay, right. now it's time for Christmas gifts and everybody should see the Barmix range, okay? Barmix are throughout Australia and New Zealand with new buildings in Geelong and Pran. Here's the, <laughs> here's the Melbourne head office number, okay? You can call there tonight, reverse the charge, or tomorrow for inquiries. That That's number back there, okay? Therese is going to be back with us next year. Thank you. It's been Thank a good you. year. Okay, all the best to Bar Mix. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> um, it's tough making a statement uh, when you want to say something as dramatically or strong as I would like to say this. Uh, without question, I think uh, Paul Hogan has almost single handedly created a new awareness of Australian comedy, Australian style comedy, its own thing. Uh, he's had an enormous impact on all Australians. And over the last 12 months, uh, his influence has spread abroad, uh, with his own show being shown in such countries as Germany and Thailand and the United States and Japan. And more recently, it's been shown in Britain, uh, where his program uh, was the spearhead of the launch of the new London television channel, Channel 4. And according to all our reports, our own Paul Hogan will soon be a very huge star in England as well. Uh, the new television channel opened last Tuesday, and uh, this is some of the Hogan that English viewers got to look at here. His fierce love of one woman will touch your very soul. Uh, left me one extra Christmas present. Uh, do said, I, I well, I don't know. I, she said that I could have that. Uh, yeah, she I, said, I saw the present she gave to me out here, the gold toothpick. Oh, gee, I've always wanted one of them, mate. Yes? Yeah. And, and, and champagne She's flavored? She's so thoughtful, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funny bird. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's thermal yeah. underwear or something like that. <laughs> Go on, you call it. Thanks. I'm like a good start. <laughs> How you doing? Okay. Uh, yeah, terrific, man. Yeah. The English thing uh, must be pretty interesting because uh, uh, immediately it's shown, of course. Uh, newspapers here run their version of what critics there said and so forth. But I, I think the, uh, the thing that I noticed the most was that every critic turned out to look at the program and to say something about it in England. Oh right. yeah, that's, it's much like here. It's a, it's terrific. It's. Uh... Even when they say it's right, it's dreadful rubbish we're getting here, and yeah. you know, don't miss the next one; it'll be even worse. And they, <laughs> and they sort of, and they do the next one and the same again, and sort of like the second show's gone to air, and you know, the Greyhound Recorder and the War Cry sort of cover it and say, you know, this, this Australian show's on again. Yeah. Uh, but it, that's terrific. The main thing is they notice it and they write about it, and they had a whole channel go to air, and they didn't write anything about it, anything else that was on it that was made in uh, in Britain. 
course, the, the Hogan Show was different. And um, well, there wasn't a lot on it that was made. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, weren't there's a lot of imported programs on that uh, Channel Four? Uh, no, no, mostly. No, is it English? Mostly yeah, I'm sorry. local rubbish. And, yeah, <laughs> wasn't much good. And uh, what, what I'm doing, viewers, is um, I'm perpetrating the Australian image. And mm. What I get a little bit of flack back here about uh, ruining the Australian image. You know. Now, let me say this most strongly, viewers. I don't know if you've got any idea what the Australian image is, say, in the UK. But comedy-wise and uh, television-wise, they've had um, Edna Everidge, very funny, but it's a man dressed up as a woman. <laughs> and then they had Reg Livermore over there to do the <laughs> Betty, Betty Blockbuster review, the man dressed up as a woman. <laughs> and they had uh, a special on the BBC, Auntie Jack, a man dressed up as a woman. <laughs> And so, you know, the first thing they say to me, you're an Australian comedian, where's your dress? <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm going to shatter that image that to get a laugh in Australia, you've got to wear a dress. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fine. You know, I don't mind that at all. And um, I, I think showing a comedy show from this country shows that, that we're a grown-up, sophisticated nation. You know? You've got you to be grown up to laugh at yourself. And, our, and, you know, our image overseas, our image in the UK is pretty crook. Yeah, they always, they put down Australians a lot, don't they? Well, it's, you can't blame them. It's half the people that go there are terrific. You'd be proud of them back here. But then 25% of them turn into Baz and Mackenzie, which, <laughs> you know, which we might have laughed at, but the, the hat with the corks and throwing up everywhere. I mean, and, you know, Pommy Basher and the sort of thick as a brick can't chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> and, and the other half of our image over there are these even worse sort of whackers that get off the plane and immediately adopt what they think is an Oxford accent. And, and you know, and the, and the Poms laugh at them because they can, they can hear the Australianism in it. Because they're ashamed of being Australians, you know. But the other half are like me. Um, <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> worldly and, and quite proud of me, you know, uh, that I had the, misfor the fortune to be born in this wonderful country. Prolific. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing your, your image a lot of good, viewers, let me say, most <laughs> vehemently. You know. What is it? There's a, there's a certain section in, uh, in, uh, in London, isn't there? What is it called? Something court. Earl's Court. Earl's Court, Canary yeah. Valley, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, Did you just, visit there when you went over? No, the Aussies aren't there now. All the Arabs have moved into there. <laughs> Where do the Australians go? Yeah, well, they just sort of scatter. Beirut. Place, right? <laughs> I, I, just, the good thing about having a show on there is now I've got a name. You know, my name's Paul Hogan, but I was the Foster's geezer. For 12, I was signing autographs to Foster's geezer. I mean, people would come up and say, aren't you the Foster's geezer? Because I was just doing Foster's ads. That's right, that we showed those. Yeah, yeah and I had, no, had no name with them. Just, yeah. I really got to, and I used to go into hotels and I'm the Foster's geezer, sign that on the, on the yeah. register. So it's nice now to be, be Oaks over there and have a name. But even, even though they know your head and they know your face, I mean, we've been through this before, we've talked about this, you are a pretty anonymous character when it gets outside. I mean, you have a way of putting your no, head down and walking no. around and nobody even knows where you are. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're the only person in the world that believes that. I do. I, well, well, I walked into a place. Let me where... tell you this, viewers. Is that we, yeah, we went to a fight one night, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Don couldn't get over how we walked through this joint, and everyone recognised him, and they didn't. Well, tell them how they recognised you. Though. Well, it's I was not... walking behind you to start, <laughs> with my head down, and I'm five foot nine, and you six foot eleven, right? <laughs> and I think that satin jacket with "I love your face" is written across. <laughs> <the face. laughs> And then he says, I can't understand what they spot me everywhere. They don't, but they were yelling terrible things at me. You big Yankee Galaga home, you yabo, and all that. They no, don't say no, anything to you. Do you? No, what, what it is, mate, is actually people I'll walk someone past someone on the street of Melbourne and they'll sort of go and walk past. Yeah. Not when you get out of the country. It's totally different. You'll be walking down streets in any other country in the world. They walk straight up and they say, G'day, eggs. Dump, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's, you know, Paris or Rome anywhere. Right. Of a dump. Yeah. <laughs> I see Fraser's turned it on over there with the retrospective tax thing, you know, what are we going to do about that? And then they say, see you later, and walk off. Like as if they'd seen me five minutes ago and they'll see me half an hour again. There's no... Right, difference. yeah. But back here, they walk past you in the street. Sort of go, Is that him? No. <laughs> <laughs> what about America? Does America recognise you now? Yeah, and they, they, to... they're really polite, the Yanks. Yeah. I mean, they really are. Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> in New York, sometimes you'll go and say, um, where do I get to... 57th Street, and yeah. they'll tell you to go and do something which is, you know, anatomically impossible. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> or the other extreme. They'll say, you know, you go down there to the bus stop, 
and you get on the bus and it takes you to 54th and tell him to get you up at Lexington. You need a quarter, you've got, to have, you've got a quarter, here's the money, the change sort of thing. But that, that's, that's the funny part about people around the world when you ask directions. Mm -hmm. In Australia, I, we apologise. If we, one or two things, you ask someone in Australia for directions <laughs> and they either say, you say, uh, how do I get to Barker Street? And they go, oh, I don't know, and, and wipe it. Or, if they don't know, quite often they apologise. And they go on and on, and I've seen them, and I've seen it and listened in, and it's sort of like, uh, Bark, oh, geez, I don't live around here. Uh, gee, I'm sorry, mate. Um, <laughs> I, I come from Brisbane, and you know, I'm just sort of passing through. When I say I come from Brisbane, I wasn't actually born in Brisbane. <laughs> you know, you know, my mother's Latvian, and, and on and on it goes. And it's true. It's, so it, what's the end result? How's the program going, uh, as far as you're concerned? Do you get reports from anybody? They tell oh, you? The program's going. Uh, about half the population of Great Britain watched the first one. Fantastic, you can't do better. Uh, of course, it was the opening <laughs> night of their second commercial channel. Right. I don't know how many watched the second night yet, but all the press did, and some mm. of them said, you know, uh, rubbish, and some said terrific. Um, it's in 30 states in America now, and I can go over there and they all say, Mr. Hogan. Uh, yeah. Be polite, Yanks. I say, Mr. Hogan, can I get your autograph? And I'd like Ozzy, yeah, sign this, Hogs. <laughs> <laughs> On the arms. <laughs> <laughs> Can I shake your head? I hope that it's a, a smash over there. And I, but I, you're not going to leave here. You're still going to be doing your shows here. No, right? see, well, that's why I'm doing it. It's part of the five-year plan, mate. I'm going over there, and I'm selling them beer, and I'm doing comedy shows. So right now, the Poms trust me. Huh? Right. <laughs> so no, as we go down the road, because yeah, I tell the truth all the time. As we go down the road, I'll start telling them about what a wonderful place this is. And then they're going to come flocking out here as tourists. Right. We don't want them to come migrate. We've got too many out here now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, Right. No, I didn't mean poms. Love the poms. We love the poms. <laughs> grovel, grovel. No, I mean tourists. Oh, no, tourists, right, yeah. Th this is the, and I genuinely mean this. We, you know, we should have, we should be sort of on easy street with tourism in this country. And that, you know, the government doesn't know how to promote it. But in a couple of years' time, once I've won their confidence and the Yanks, yeah. who trust me, I'll get them flocking out here and we'll have, you know, this country will get back on its feet through tourism. And I really mean that. And it's the greatest industry in the world because they come out here and they spend their money and they nick off. You don't have to educate. <laughs> you don't have to put them in hospitals or Your house could be on one of those bus tours. As one Hogan's day, house house. Us, you'll have a statue of me down here. <laughs> Paul statue. Hogan, everybody. Going to be bigger and better than ever next year. Thanks, Eric. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Well, have a nice time at the party. Maybe. We'll be back. Thank you. Go away. Thank you very much. Can I just, if I just make a request, I'm sorry, I know we got time problems, but it's the last show to you. What I'd like you to do is, there's a group of fellas over there, just stay where you are, all of you, just stay where you are. Can you just pan from the top, no, Stephen, you'll have to step out of the way. Can you just, stay there, don't move. Can you just pan from the top of them right down? Can you do that, please? Why don't you see, we told them we wanted them to wear dinner suits tonight, they said fine. Now have a look down at the feet there, they're sneakers. <laughs> And if you think, and if you don't think that's a classic, have a look at our guy on the boom. Have a look at the shoes he wore because I told him to put a tie on for the first time in his life. No, get around the angle, you gotta see the shoes. That's it, there, have a look. There they are, that's his best. That's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but he wore a tie. But he wore a tie, that's perfect. Anyway, the effort was there. You know, when world-famous singing duos are discussed, certain big names instantly spring to mind. Names like Johnny Cash and his wife, June, Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings, Doug Anthony and Flo Bielke-Peterson. <laughs> well, these names pale into insignificance when our next artist's names are mentioned. I refer, of course, to Tex and Myrtle Newton. Uh, we're very honored to have Tex and Myrtle with us tonight as they canceled the prior engagement at the Grong Grong Matong Mechanics Institute. <laughs> just to be with us. <laughs> now, I know most of you have been waiting for this all night, and if you get up to make a cup of tea now, we'll understand. Uh, but here they are with their latest hit, which incidentally has just gone Laminex. <laughs> How about a big greeting for country music's own Tex and Myrtle Newton, yeah! <laughs> hey. 
Hey, hey. I, 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 do th I do thank you, Don. I do, Myrtle and I do thank you very much indeed for allowing us once again to be on this here show. This is Myrtle, as you know, and Myrtle, of course, you know that Don was only joshing before, which is country term for, uh, you know, uh, laughing and all that sort of jazz. In actual fact, folks, it really is a great pleasure to be back in your fine country of Australia. We have had great times since we last saw you as support act to Tani Tim and other famous stars. We were doing some new material for you this evening, but at the assistance of Mr. Lane over yonder, dear old Morton, by the way, congratulations, wonderful, wonderful news. Wonderful news. I, I hope the two of you are very happy together. I'm doing an exclusive tomorrow morning on that one. Uh, we're gonna do for you not any new material as requested because right around the country, where air, where I say where air we play, we are asked to do the song that we made famous called, uh, these cameras are very hard to follow, boy. Uh, it's called, it's called, uh, Dear John. Thank you. What happened to the other gent? Mr. Lyle, nice to see you. Whenever you're ready, boy, don't be a little twang there. He's a nice man, eh? Don't you like him? <laughs> yeah, sing the song, girl, sing the song. Dear John. Hiya, dear John. Oh, how I hate A little more John. twang there, son. Oh, that's right. Yeah, just here and there. Grass, some of the boys over there were smoking it earlier. Yeah. yeah. I was overseas in battle when the postman came to me. When he handed me this letter, oh, I was as happy as I could be. You see, the fighting was all over, and the battle had been won. So I opened up this letter, and it opened up, Dear John. Dear John. I just said that, but oh, how I hate A little boy wanging there, sir. Oh, oh, God, that is just lovely. Will you please send back my autograph picture of Malcolm Just Fraser? The one where he's smiling, it's now a collector's item. When you find out who I'm wedding, you won't care, dear, anyhow. I'm wedding your best friend, come on. Will you wish us happiness forever? Dear John, I hate to rhyme. And tonight. Friends, this story is true. Except for the part about Kamal and Malcolm Fraser. They're just good friends. Dear John. Ah, dear John. Oh, how I hate. How she hates to ride. Dear tonight. I wear another. Dear John. We do, I, we do thank you, yeah, yeah. The lady there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. Over there, hey, you must have made it for me to find over there. Yeah. Half the fun, sir, isn't it? Nice to meet you. It's good to see you. Well, thank you, lady, thank you. 
do thank you. I must say it's been uh, it's been what two or three years since we had your, your pleasure of having you out Would here. Would be about three years, and it's nice to be back here, Mr. Land. You're looking beautiful as ever. And thank uh, you, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, it's really a thrill for us to have you back. But of course, yeah. You, <laughs> first time? No, no, never. You've seen me at parties. Yes, <laughs> this is. Uh, but of course, uh, you you always have a lot of good things to say about Australian audience, Australian people. You think they're warm. Uh, they're really warm, warm, wonderful people. As a matter right. of fact, I, uh, I'm not just saying this. I, I mean it when I say that I want to come back one day and make a movie here. Oh, well, I understand. Indeed. I think that's You've never heard an American movie. star say that before, no, have you? I never no, have. Especially <laughs> those that are out there on their kyber. Yeah. Yes, right. And, and uh, Myrtle certainly has... Um, she uh, certainly has grown. I pump her every morning. <laughs> Sometimes twice on the nice weekend. Nice talking to you, Merlin. I, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you, Mr. Merle. Lane. I do thank you. It's my pleasure. I thank you. Believe me. Thank you, thank you Mr. Lane. Do you realize the text has now turned into Colonel Sanders? That's right. He's Colonel Wright from the start. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. We'll see you later on. Yes, yeah. certainly, sir. All the best. 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 You got it, sir. It's all right. Wall. Wall. You're on this wall. Thank you. Uh, what am I? You're very warm, sir. I thought you'd think that. <laughs> Uh, it's always fun for me when I get Tim Evans out here. He's usually got a lot to say or a lot to read or a lot to think up about or whatever he does. I don't know. We have a good time with him anyhow. How about a hand? Tim Evans, here he is right there. Thank you. Oh, now, geez. explain these. I think you better explain Yes, these. well, I, I've got three minutes to become a small hit, so it's got to right. be... Uh, <laughs> what we're doing, these are just sort of leftover material from the year because uh, Don didn't have time to get them all in, so I didn't want to throw them away. I thought I'd come out and do them for you, okay? All right. Leftovers. Here's, here's the first one. Welcome to the show. This is National Arthritis Week, so in honor of that, right after the show, we're all going to go to some joint and get stiff. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Adelaide today, a local nursery that fertilized marijuana seeds with vodka was fined in the city court for selling really potted pot plants. <laughs> Two over there. <laughs> in Brisbane last night, an unidentified man held up a Chinese restaurant and got away with over $3,000 to take away. <laughs> no Chinese. And a Queensland man tried to sell Premier Joe Bioki Peterson a cemetery plot for $2,000. Reports are that Joe said, $2,000, that's ridiculous. I'm only going to be there for three days. <laughs> There's a rumor that... Oh, that I deserve better than that. <laughs> I'll defend that one. That's a... But There's a rumor that Ida Buttrose will host a documentary on the dangers of Australian railway crossings. The special will be called Stop Looking Lithin. <laughs> Meanwhile, meanwhile, it's too late to apologize. Meanwhile, Ida's writing a book about her ancestors. It's called Woots. Okay, here's a little bit of useless information for you. The vital statistics of a mermaid are 38, 24, and $8 a kilo. <laughs> There's a new birth control pill that has been proved by all religions. It weighs 15 kilos. You don't swallow it, you just carry it around all day, and by the time you go to bed, you're too tired to do anything else. <laughs> My Irish neighbor, Mrs. Monahan, told me she hates daylight saving because her husband used to wake up every morning at seven o'clock feeling very sexy, and now it happens to him at the bus stop. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes, you want to leave finish? it? No, you uh, want to no. leave it. A couple of you jokes. You got a big finish? A couple of quick ones here. Okay, we got a big right. finish. Okay, right. Okay, for you, knock, yes. knock. Who's there? Coo. Coo who? Exactly. <laughs> right? Knock, knock. Yo, who's there? Carrie. Carrie who? You sacked. <laughs> okay. Right. And now since, since one to go off with, this, uh, this local cricket side is playing, right? This horse is leaning over the fence watching the cricket. And he turns to the captain. He said, that would be the worst display of cricket I've ever seen in my life. And the captain says, how about that, a talking horse? And he says, never mind that. What about the cricket? And the captain says, well, I suppose you could do better. He said, I couldn't do any worse. So he sends a horse in to bowl. Horse walks in, three balls, takes three wickets, gets the other side out. He thinks this is terrific. He sends a horse in to open the batting, right? Horse puts on the pads, goes out. First ball hits it almost to the boundary. And before he can get to the other end of the pitch, the guy runs out, throws the ball back in, and the horse is run out for a duck. 
As he walks back in, the captain says, you would be the slowest thing I've ever seen in my life. And the horse says, look, if I could run, I'd be in Mooney Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Evans, everybody, with leftovers. We're taking a commercial. We are. We'll be back. We got the wheel. Oh, the wheel. Don's Wheel featuring Newton's Nuts. And tonight, the major prize is one of three cars valued between $7,000 and $8,000, a Gemini, a Mazda, or a Sigma, from Gary and Warren Smith, Oakley, Margrave, and Sunshine. Gary and Warren say, underpay. <coughs> and cruise Sid Meier's fabulous Pacific on board the magnificent Fair Star on a dream holiday with Sid Meier's Saver Holidays. And what about Metabo Power Tools from West Germany? The superpowers for handymen and tradesmen and a super prize. Also on the wheel, $1,200 cash from Kmart, your fashion saving place. And a week's holiday for two at Greenmark Tourist Resort, flying with TAA to the beautiful end of the Gold Coast. And now, fresh from his success with the John, here's Bert. <laughs> I couldn't miss those. What's it? You took your makeup off. Anyway. Yes, and I've got some stuff in the eyes, and I cannot see a foot in front of me. Is Where are you, Don? I'm over here. I'm over here. Don't it's worry nice about to it. see you. By gosh, you're looking well. It's going to be. A, they told me we got. Pro you want to hear something funny? I'm looking at my watch, and it keeps saying 20 to 11. I'm saying, yes. what's everybody panicking about? We got years yet. My watch has stopped. I don't know why. It's that's the French one is that too, right? isn't it? Yeah. The is time it? in Eastern. No, I beg your pardon. The time uh, Eastern Summer Time yeah. is one minute to 11 o'clock. We are late. Yeah, we have to hurry because the the uh, the, the satellite the, is about to. Uh, not only the satellite, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the uh, shuttle, a space shuttle. The shuttle is about to go. Tennis too or something. Or go. Let's meet the nut. Uh, yes, it's Mr. Henry Hackenpour. Last nut of the year. The very last nut. It's Henry Hackenpour, who's from Kilsyth in Victoria. Okay, Henry. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, it's Don Lane. Henry is a is a casual worker, and uh, and also there's not much information. Are you married, Henry? No. Nah, nah. You're not. You're not married. Nah. Uh, do you have any children, Henry? No. Nah. No. Uh, what do What's you... Henry supposed to do? Does he look like Molly? That's what he looks well, like. Well, I think is that, that it says here you do impressions. You obviously do an impression of Molly Meldrum, do you? Yeah, I work in a sausage factory. <laughs> yeah, so does Molly, the ABC. Uh, but, <laughs> but what we'd like... You actually do an impression of, uh, of, what are you of doing Molly in a sausage Meldrum? Factory? Well, I do a lot of the impressions, and uh, I, some people say I look like Elton John. And, Elton uh, John? Yeah. No, I don't think so. But you look like Molly. All oh, right. You don't dress like yeah, well, Molly. Yeah, well, they asked me tonight to do. Uh, Bert asked me tonight to do a uh, impression of Molly. Molly. Would yeah. you like to sit over there and fall asleep, or what? What would you like to do? No, no, no. It's fine. I mean, no. But my mate. Would you like Don and myself to jump around and, and go? Woo! No, no, no. My mate asked me because of the other night we watched the show. Is it true you are getting married to Michelle Dan? <laughs> <laughs> May I answer that on your behalf? Oh, I'd like a punch in the face. <laughs> no, Don and I have uh, nothing to say. No, we are just good true. friends. No, I'm not going. I'm not going. No, oh, no, right. no. Yeah, I, she's a very, she's a beautiful yeah. lady. Very so nice. So I, I do do. Uh, do do. You do do. Yeah. I, I used to hey, do do. Listen, he's doing a great Molly. I used to do do. He does. I used to do do, but I took something for that. Yeah, that's what they've asked me to do tonight. Well, you go ahead and do it. Okay. All right. So I just want to do a impersonation of Molly Hoham. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah, right, sure, okay. So this is Henry. So can we just get the audience to wave, like, um, you know, like a countdown? Or, yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh, oh that's so cool. Too. That's lovely. Very refreshing. All right. All right. Quite, quite everyone. Uh, this is uh, a fabulous album. Uh, so uh, it's an instrumental by um, Graham Lyle, who's a great uh, instrumentalist. In uh, there's a few bum notes, but. Who am I to say that? And uh, that's uh, one that you really must not do yourself a favour on. Henry, say uh, this... one ill word against that and I'll break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> I have been excited about many albums in my life and um, uh, not since Donnie and Marie have I ever been so excited about an album. Uh, John and Yoko, forget it. Uh, this is Bert and Patty. And believe me, uh, um, 
this, it's just a fabulous album. So do yourself the old one, two, three, and uh, <laughs> go out and sort of, you know, have a listen to it. This one's an American album. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not really into American albums at the moment. I'm sort of, you know, more uh, English, you know, new wave and uh, all of that. But I can't work out this, whether it's East Coast or West Coast American. I detect it's done in New York and uh, it's from the Yonkers. But I tell you what, this, if it's not bulleting up the charts, should be given the bullet because, like, this is a fabulous album. There's one track on this called She Believes in Me. So obviously that Michelle, he believes in you. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, a great friend of ours from Countdown, Molly Meldrum. Molly Meldrum, we got it. We got to spin the wheel for the man first. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, any number you want, Molly. No, what I'd like to. Molly, that was a great impression of that guy. I know. Good. Yeah. Very clever. How many of you did he fool? Some of you? No. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> he fooled about right. twenty-five he people who walked no out. Now. Right. No, we'll spin the wheel. I'm not going to take the prize, and uh, this prize I want donated, and Channel Nine has agreed to this. Uh, to the uh, Royal Children's Hospital. Lovely. You got a deal. All right. Lovely. What do you, what the Royal Children's Hospital need? Sorry. Well, you can always sell the prize on anyway. All right. right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not a man. Can I spin? Yeah, of course you can, Molly. All right. Of course you can. Spin. Okay. Off you go. Spin. I don't mean that about no. that is all. <laughs> oh, spin the wheel. <laughs> Um, I don't know what happened there. Do you know what happened there? I wasn't Ma watching, unfortunately, no, Michelle Don. Downs walked past... We Will were you stop? <laughs> Hattie, Hattie, Hattie. Might have that record, by the way. Yes. You know, that's the only photograph in existence of Don and Michelle walking along Will the beach. You... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. She was walking along the yes, beach. Yes, it's all right. She was picking up it's pebbles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> picking up a pearly shell. I would have sworn he would have hit me right across the face <laughs> then, but he didn't. I know, I feel better now, you know, because it's... It's all out. Yeah, sure. Right. Exactly. <laughs> what? What's happened? Peter, were you keeping close attention to this, well, or were you... Well, what did it land on? What did it land on? It landed on number one. It didn't land on number it, one. It really... Did. did it land on number one? <laughs> well, then, the children's hospital gets a car, and Gary Warren Smith has got to go for it again. Hooray! <laughs> They'll get I mean, free medical attention at the children's actually, hospital. Actually, if Gary Warren Smith don't want to give you the car, don't worry about it. Molly will buy the car for yeah, you. It'll be all right. right. Not to worry about yeah. It. yeah. You got the call. Thanks, man. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Molly. Thank Molly very much for coming. Thank you. Molly Melville. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. In case I don't get a chance to say this at the end of the show, we're going to go for commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to do a big finish. Okay? Um, there's been a lot written this year about me, the show, me and him, and a whole lot of things. This is the best, and there is—they don't come any better than this. We'll be back. Thank you. Thanks, Sid. Good on you. All right. Thank you very, very much. Um, uh, like I said uh, before when I was talking about Bert, this has been uh, quite a year for us. Uh, we've had uh, our ups and our downs. There's been some amazing highlights. Uh, Gatcom Park with Captain Mark Phillips and uh, I mean Princess Anne's home. And of course, uh, the trip from Memphis uh, to visit Gracelands before anybody else in the world got a chance to really walk through there and we were able to show it to Australia. It was a big thrill for us. Plus a lot of other highlights. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, the people you work with, of course, are the most important. Um, first thing I'd like to do is uh, uh, former fatty over here, uh, Greg.
Graham Lyle, uh, has put together a host of musicians that I would have to say, I mean, I would be proud to say, this is the best band in television in Australia. And when the, when the show, when the, when the show is being shown overseas as well, the people over there commented on it too. We got the three best uh, backup singers in the business. Bootsy, of course, who's become a great friend all through the year on piano. And all of these guys in the band and Graham Lyle, I would appreciate it very much if you would put your hands together for all of them. It would be such a wonderful thing. Funny thing working in here, we all get to know each other and uh, we have our hassles and when we get down to the end of the year like this, it gets a little sad because everybody feels uh, we're all part of a team. I know you hear that kind of talk a lot, but uh, it's the truth, we are. We are all part of a team. There isn't any of us could do this, any of this by ourselves. Peter Feynman, uh, our uh, savior, our mentor, um, and David Evans uh, and the other people at the channel, uh, Jim McKay. And I'm gonna leave people out here, I'll probably get in trouble, but. Uh, uh, they have been just really good to us and backed us a thousand percent throughout the course of the year. It's always good to know that you got the the, uh, the top echelon behind you. Plus the help that we get on the show is uh, people. Let me see. I just want you to see one guy. Tony, come here a second. Come here a minute. We're always talking about Tony Bartuccio and a Tony Bartuccio dances. This is the guy who puts it all together, choreographs everything, does it all. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and uh, there's many, many others. You'll probably get to meet them all now. Uh, thanks. It's been a good year, and uh, we're all ready to go for the next year. As Graham Lyle said today, well, only 81 shows to go. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go take a rest, gear ourselves up for the next year, and we'll try to do what we always try to do. We'll try, try to give you the biggest and the best, and uh, do it the best way you know how to entertain you at home. And if there's any names gonna be coming through, we'll get them, and if there's anything uh, that we think you should see, we'll try and get that too, and uh, thank you. It's been a great year. We'll finish the way we usually do. Uh, this is a song we've been doing since 1979, I think. Sort of become a tradition with us, too. Words say a lot, okay? So have a listen here. Looking back through all the years, through the good times and the tears that made our memories now the picture I can see has set my heart at ease heaven knows we had it good we had it bad but knock on wood we both survived the best we could though there were times we thought we never would as long as we keep believing And staying means more than leaving As long as we're living and breathing We believe in you Just believe in us too Now we've seen so many friends And beginning turn to ends And watch them walk away It's a wonder you and I have what we have today Cause heaven knows sometimes we swore We had enough but thank the Lord We always stopped one step before We took that step that took us out the door As long as we keep believing And staying means more than leaving Believe in us too And we can change and we can grow As long as we both know No matter what, we're all we've got And if we keep our trust and if we keep our faith Well then the two of us, we're bound to make it As long as we keep believing
just believe in.